Hello and welcome to the Alaska College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Alaska. That's strivescan.com slash Alaska. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Oregon Institute of Technology. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for being here, especially on a weekend. Uh, my name is Cassidy. I'll be presenting on behalf of Ryan, who will be your admissions counselor um, for the state of Alaska. But we'll get going. Um, so again, Oregon Institute of Technology, our short name is Oregon Tech. Uh, we are Oregon's only polytechnic university, meaning that we focus primarily on hands-on hands education um, and STEM programs. So those hands-on, um, that hands-on education will come um, to show itself through projects and labs, internships and externships, um, and some really exciting opportunities on our campuses. So total enrollment sits at a little over 5,000 students, um, but that is in its entirety, including our online students. Um, so we are primarily split into two different campuses. Our main campus is located down in Klamath Falls, Oregon, um, sort of near the bottom of the state there. Um, undergraduate, a little over 35, um, but that main residential campus will have 2,300 students. Um, so we're powered by the sun and heat. Um, Klamath Falls, Oregon is actually the sunniest city in the state of Oregon. Um, so we utilize that sun as much as possible. We have some solar panels on campus um, and a great spot um, down in Klamath Falls for geothermal power. So one of the few spots in the country, um, very exciting and fortunate to be able to use that. Um, but we have over 40 different academic programs, over 50 different student clubs and organizations. And we do have athletics located down at our Klamath Falls campus. Um, they play within a smaller conference. You'll see here the Cascade Collegiate Conference. Our secondary campus is located up in the Portland metro area. If you're familiar with Oregon, you're probably familiar with Portland. Um, so we're located a little bit south of that. It is a commuter campus. So there's no on-campus housing located up there, um, but still some great opportunities for students again. Um, Oregon Tech has some of the top earning alumni um, in the state of Oregon. So 96% of our graduates are either um, employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation and they're making minimum $60,000 per year. Again, those STEM programs that I mentioned, um, we're gonna focus on um, engineering as one of our largest programs, um, but some of these health sciences ones over here get to be pretty popular as well. Um, one thing I will point out in our engineering program is renewable energy engineering. Um, Oregon Tech was the very first university in the United States to offer renewable energy as a bachelor's program. We currently offer a master's as well. Um, there's currently only one other school right now that offers this bachelor's program. Um, and again, that solar, powered, solar power and geothermal power um, are great technology that our students are able to study um, right outside in their backyard. Our health science degrees, again, going to be one of the more popular and larger programs. Um, some of these are pretty specialized programs, or what we call closed cohort, meaning they require second, um, a first year of prerequisites before applying into your second, third, and fourth years. These students will often go on to externships into hospitals or clinic settings um, and really get that real world experience. We do have business programs as well. Um, again, like I said, I'm covering for Ryan, who is your um, admissions counselor, but as an admissions counselor myself, I'm also an alum of Oregon Tech. I have my bachelor's degree in marketing, so you'll see some of our standard um, business programs over here, including marketing um, and some really fascinating tech degrees as well. Moving on into the applied sciences, um, these ones are pretty unique, pretty exciting. Um, students are doing a lot of really fun research projects, um, including data science. Communication studies is a great one to look into if maybe you're not sure where you're at, um, but a lot of students at Oregon Tech are pretty driven and pretty focused um, on these programs that we have set out. But on campus, um, a lot of stuff to do on campus, of course. You're only spending a short amount of your time in class in college, um, so there's quite a bit to do down in Klamath Falls um, and on our Portland Metro campus as well. Um, it's completely optional to live on campus if that's something that you'd like to do. We have a couple different options. Again, those clubs and programs, a lot of different opportunities for students, some awesome resources and great support. Um, student inv involvement and belonging is going to be 
um, your option for campus life, fun activities, um, going bowling, going to the movies, doing all that fun, exciting stuff. Um, and then of course those athletics, um, our gym was just completely renovated. Um, so money's going into the campus in the next couple of years to um, you know, make it the best for our students, which we are really excited about. Moving on into our um, admissions requirements. So we go off of what we call a core GPA. That's gonna be the GPA based on these 15 core classes. Um, please note four years of math on there, uh, but we'll focus on what we call deficiencies as well. So a deficiency is gonna be something um, that a class that you've earned a D or an F in, or you did not take the class at all. So we can substitute that fourth year of math if you've got a deficiency. Um, we'll work with a 3.0 down to a 2.5, um, sometimes a little bit less. Again, uh, depending on those deficiencies, if you've got more than um, more than one in math or and science, it will result in an automatic deny. Um, but we do have these awesome scholarships available for students, and you'll note that we are a WUI school. The Western Undergraduate Exchange is an incredible program for students in the Western states, and that includes Alaska. Um, so that is going to be an incredible tuition discount for you. Um, but our fall 22 application is currently open. Um, so for you seniors out there, great opportunity to start looking around. Um, our application is extremely accessible. We are test optional. But you can use those tests to supplement for some scholarships if you'd like, um, but no essay, no transcript at the time of application, no letter of recommendation, um, and really kind of no hassle. Um, we can also give you a fee waiver code um, to waive that $50 application fee. This is going to be the application on our website. Um, we are currently heading towards Common App. Um, hopefully that will become the norm here pretty soon, but this is our first year, um, so we are available on Common App as well. Um, so again, just some further information. Here's my information here. I am covering for Ryan. Um, I will drop his information in the chat. Um, but we've got some awesome events coming up in the spring. Um, and you can visit our website for any further information. Thanks so much for having me here today, guys. Thank you. And a reminder to our participants, if you have questions um, for any of our schools here today, feel free to put them in the Q&A during the presentations and they will answer them for you. Up next, we have Southern Oregon University. Hi, everybody. My name is Ian from Southern Oregon. Let me get my screen share going. All right, there you should be able to see it. Uh, it's a nice little picture of campus. As you can see, we are very much an outdoorsy type of campus. It's really like a big nature park, so really beautiful campus located at the base of the Siskiyou Mountains. If you're not familiar with Ashland, Oregon, where we're located, we are right down on the southern border of Oregon. We're about 10 minutes from California. Uh, we are located right on the five freeway, so access to all the big cities up and down the west coast is pretty easy by car. We also have the Rogue Valley Medford International Airport located about 20 minutes from campus uh, with direct flights into Medford Airport from all of those cities that you see. So getting to us by car or plane is pretty easy. Uh, so Medford and Ashland were located in what's called the Rogue Valley, which is the fourth largest metro area in the state with a little over 215,000 people. So we definitely have some big city amenities, although Ashland has about 25,000 full-time residents. But it is very much a tourist destination, so the whole economy of Ashland is focused on entertainment, which makes it a really fun place to live and go to school, uh, because everywhere you go, uh, there's entertaining things built into the community, uh, so lots of things definitely to do. Now, being so far south, we don't have your typical northwest weather. We have a lot less rain than most of the northwest. We average about half the amount of rain as Portland, and about half the amount of rain as the Willamette Valley. We actually have less rain than the national average, and we get about two snowstorms a year that only drop about uh, four inches total and that's usually gone within a day or two. So you don't have to live with snow on the ground or shoveling driveways or, wind, or scraping windshields, all that really cold stuff. But you can see right behind us, we do have a mountain with a ski area. So the Mount Ashland ski area is only about 25, 30 minutes from campus. So best of both worlds, you don't have to live in the snow, but if you wanna go play in the snow, it's close by. And you can see our average temperatures in the summer, we're in the low 80s. We will get up to 100 a couple of times in the middle of summer. And in the winter, we still get up into the low 50s, high 40s most days. So very mild four seasons climate. Uh, this is a shaky little, little video I took riding my bike through campus. So um, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you guys what campus looks like from the ground. While I talk about some stats, we have about 5,500 uh, total uh, students and about 4,800 undergraduate students. 
and our average class size is 21. But the really nice thing about our classes, everyone is taught by faculty. There's no graduate students or teacher's assistants teaching classes. So you get to know your faculty really well. Average GPA of our admitted students is a 3.3, uh, but our minimum GPA for admission is a 2.5 unweighted cumulative GPA out of high school. Uh, we do have 40 different majors. I'll show you those in a minute, as well as over 100 other areas of study, which include minors, certificates, micro-credentials, and graduate programs. We'll also talk about our four residence halls later. We do have 13 men's and women's varsity sports, including scholarships, and over 100 clubs and organizations that our students can take part in and belong to. So here are our 40 majors. Uh, no surprises, our most popular majors are business, psychology, and communication. Those are really the most popular majors at most universities you look at. Uh, we just renovated our science buildings. We have some great STEM programs with really nice equipment in our labs. We have a great um, medical school admission rate, dental school admission rate. Uh, we're also really well known for the arts. We're the designated center for the fine and performing arts within the state of Oregon. Fantastic programs in theater, music, as well as visual and studio art. Digital cinema is a really popular one as well. Uh, so we do expect first year students to live on campus. We just renovated our residence halls about five years ago. So first year students will be living in these two buildings here, Shasta and McLaughlin. Each room has high speed internet, cable television, laundry is included. Uh, also each room has a partial dividing wall. So you have a somewhat private sleeping space. And the really nice thing is you're only sharing a restroom facility with one other room. So it's not your typical, everybody on the floor uses the same restroom, it's really nice. Uh, we just built a brand new recreation center as well. So big multi-purpose gym, there's an elevated track, lots of workout equipment and a climbing wall. Uh, we also have a video gaming center. Uh, that center is used by our eSports competitive team uh, as well as any student can use that if they're into gaming. And we also built a brand new dining hall at the same time we built this um, residence hall center. So we have some really nice places to eat on campus and some pretty good food with lots of different options. And we are a Western undergraduate exchange university. Every student from Alaska who's admitted will automatically receive the Western undergraduate exchange tuition rate. As you can see, that's about a $13,000 discount off of the out of state tuition. And you will have the Western undergraduate exchange tuition rate so long as you're a student at Southern Oregon. And if you have above a 3.0 high school GPA, you will get a merit scholarship as well. Those merit scholarships range between one and $4,000. If you have a 3.5 GPA or higher, you can apply to be in the Honors College, and that's an additional $2,000 on top of your merit scholarship. And then there's departmental scholarships, uh, there's a diversity scholarship and athletic scholarships as well. So here's my contact information. Don't worry about jotting that down. I'll put it in the chat as soon as I'm out of here. So thank you and hope to hear from you later. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. I love the bike video around campus. <laughs> I appreciate that. Up next, we have Grand Canyon University. Hello, my name is Liz and I am the admissions counselor for Alaska for Grand Canyon University. I actually live local. So if you are from Alaska and you're wanting to go to GCU, I can meet with you and your parents or come to your school to do like lunch table visit. But um, I actually attended GCU and uh, came back to live in Alaska afterwards. Um, GCU is a private Christian school located in the center of Phoenix. It is uh, like it has a traditional and online campuses. There are 25,000 students that attend on ground and about 90,000 90, students that attend online. Um, there are over 170,000 alumni as of 20, 2019. So obviously there are a lot more now. 90% of our students are on institutional scholarship. GCU has about 68% of its students that live on campus. So you can live on campus from freshman year th through senior year, but not all students are required to live on campus. So we have freshmen that commute from around Phoenix and then people that live there from a lot of other states. 
GCU has brand new housing and every dorm area has a pool, which is great because Phoenix can get pretty warm. Um, they also have a lot of recreational areas. So we have the Canyon Activity Center, which has a lot of basketball courts and ping pong tables and a rock wall, which is pretty fun. And then there's also Thunderground, which has a bowling alley and um, like ping pong tables and just things to do that are really fun. GCU also has like popular eating eateries on campus, including places like Chick-fil-A, Subway, Taco Bell, um, their own branded coffee company called Grand Canyon Beverage Company. That's actually branded by our business students. Um, GCU also has healthier food options on campus, which is really great too. Um, GCU has three levels of club sports, intramural sports and division one sports. So like whatever level you play, you can to be as part of a sports team. GCU has an average traditional class size of less than 27 students. So these can range from five students in your upper level classes to 80 students in your lecture halls. They don't usually go above 80 students though. Um, it is more of a teaching university than a research university. So your professors are very interested in your success, um, but they do place a great value in research as well. Um, it is built in collaboration with industry, so most of your professors have worked in the industry that you that they are teaching for. GCU has nine distinct colleges. One of those is the Honors College, which is not actually separate from your regular college, but those other eight colleges include things like engineering, psychology, education, fine arts. Um, they have a college of business and theology, and then a college of nursing. A lot of these colleges are um, degree and licensure programs. GCU's Honor College has no additional fees. It is actually the only free honors college in Arizona. Um, you don't take extra classes, but you have honors within your classes. Um, you can earn scholarships with being in the honors program. GCU also has a, is a Christian school, so it has a spiritual life. You can go to chapel once a week or the gathering once a week, which is like the worship night. These are not mandatory, but they do block out a whole hour on Monday where there are no classes, so you can attend if you want to. They also have life groups and Bible studies that are optional on campus. They also offer local and global outreach clubs, which can provide you with opportunities to serve in the local community or go on global missions trips. So GCU has a very beautiful campus. Um, they have brand new residence halls all over campus. These residence halls are mostly dorms, but they do have a lot of apartments on campus as well. These dorms um, house up four to six people. You can live in a four, four resident um, suite style dorm, or you can live in a six resident style dorm. The four style has a bedroom on each side of the living room and you share with one other person uh, a bathroom and a walk-in closet. GCU provides the bed, the desk, the mattress, the chair, and then a couch in the living room. GCU's eateries, like I mentioned before, include places like Chick-fil-A and Taco Bell. Um, and then they have all these local places that they like branded themselves and they're mostly a healthier eating options. Oh, what I didn't mention is GCU's dining system is not a swipe system. It is a dining dollar system. So you, it's dollar for dollar that you pay into your account. And then when you go buy like a $5 coffee that comes out of your account as $5. Um, like I mentioned before, GCU offers intramural sports, club sports, and division one athletics. Um, in 2019, they had 3000 participants in their intramural sports. They play against each other, it's student to student. So like your beach volleyball teams are gonna be made up of like two students per team and they have tournaments with like 50 different teams. They're really fun. Um, their club sports are paid to play. So you would travel and you play against other division one or division two institutions club sports. You can also play against junior colleges depending on the team schedule. GCU also offers an outdoor recreation club. This is really fun. You can join the club and go on trips once a month and they go hiking, backpacking, backpacking to like the Grand Canyon, Antelope Canyon. They'll go skiing at Mount Humphreys and Flagstaff. It's really fun. If you're interested in going on a free trip to GCU, you just apply. And if you're accepted, you get to go. They'll fly you down from Alaska. You stay in the dorms, do a campus tour and then fly home. 
Um, if you're interested in applying, I'll put the link to apply in the chat, but they accept most students with above a 2.8. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function to ask questions of our institutions here at any time during the presentations. Um, next, we have Willamette University. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Sue Corner. I'm the Dean of Admission at Willamette University, and I'm going to use my six minutes just to give you a really broad overview of Willamette and who we are as an institution, tell you a little bit about our story, and then hope that you'll visit us either virtually in person or in person. Um, Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, our state capital. We are a liberal arts college supported by graduate programs in business, law, art and theology. Uh, we're located in a part of the country that is definitely sought after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, and outdoor opportunities. Willamette is the most historic institution in the Western United States, founded before Oregon was even a state. Um, Willamette began to co-educate and shape innovative leaders right from the very beginning, including our very first graduate, Emily York. <laughs> As things like business, government, education, medicine, as those things were all being established in the American West, it was Willamette alumni who were equipped to lead and make an impact as these industries literally grew up around our campus. I mentioned our history because I think it's important to understand Willamette's rich heritage in order to understand who we are as an institution today. Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact in the community is what current students find here now. We are a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action. We've actually built our institution around um, a motto that informs our current Willamette experience in a, in a very real way. The motto that was established at our founding is no novus solum nati sumus, as you see here, or not unto ourselves alone are we born. And so our motto sums up what those very first alumni knew from their time at Willamette way back in the day. We are in the world together um, and our education should be a time when we practice and explore how we are going to have an impact on other people. We talk about our motto all the time at Willamette and we continually challenge ourselves to live it in new and various ways. Willamette does an exceptional job of providing students with opportunities both in and out of the classroom to practice our motto um, of making positive change through leadership, service, and innovation. In the classroom, Willamette students meet in very small groups with highly engaged faculty, um, and the faculty lead discussions and activity-based classes. These small groups are interactive. They're designed to help students develop the important skills that will see them through their lives and careers, things like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider diverse uh, perspectives. Our faculty are very accomplished academicians. They write, they research, they publish um, extensively, but first and foremost, they are teachers and mentors. Willamette faculty serve students um, and help them learn to learn <laughs> so that they can grow and change as the world around them changes once they're in their career. It's no wonder that Willamette has had more Oregon professors of the year than any other college in the state by quite a margin. Um, we feel really strongly that Willamette um, offers a, a experience that is both in classroom and includes experiential and co-curricular activities, things like study abroad, hands-on research, and internships. These are all of the critical out-of-classroom experiences that develop all Willamette students 100% participate in these experiential learning opportunities. And our very unique location offers our students an opportunity to get involved in these things differently than at many institutions. We are an urban campus set in the center of Salem's quaint downtown corridor, um, and we uniquely sit directly across the street from the state capitol building. We're 76 feet from door to door. Uh, so you can imagine the internship and research opportunities that abound for our students in everything from politics to economics to so psychology and data science. 
um, simply because of our proximity to and relationship with um, state government. Also unique to our um, location is the position of Salem Health, one of the state's largest hospitals, which sits directly across the street. Um, our thriving pre-health program uh, is well supported by our relationship with this uh, resource. Willamette also owns a 305 acre um, learning laboratory that's outdoors called Xena, where students can literally dig in the dirt of this unique region. They restore habitats, they participate in environmental research, they grow vegetables. It's an amazing resource. Finally, Willamette is co-located with Tokyo International University of America. The American Studies program at Willamette brings more than 100 um, East Asian students to live and learn at Willamette every year. Um, and this program is a great reminder of Willamette's strong commitment to all things global, which includes a number of our students, a large percentage of our students studying abroad every year. As you can see, Willamette is physically located in such a way that we are literally surrounded by opportunities for our students to extend their learning beyond campus. There's so much more that I could say about Willamette. I could go on and on, but my six minutes are just about up. So I just wanna mention that Willamette uses the common application. We review applications holistically and we've been fully test optional for years. We never charge a fee to apply um, because we don't want that to be a barrier for any student seeking access to Willamette. And every applicant is considered for our generous financial aid awards. We encourage applications from bright, diverse, prepared students. And I hope that you'll allow me to help you if you have an interest in learning more about Willamette or want to apply, I'm your contact and I'd love to be of help to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. And a reminder to use that Q&A function if you have questions of any of our institutions here during the presentations. Up next, we have Western Oregon University. Hello, my name is Kristen Mahoney. I am the admissions counselor for Western Oregon University. Uh, sorry about the webcam situation. Uh, it is not operating as I had hoped today, uh, but we are located in the heart of the Willamette Valley. We are the oldest public university in the state of Oregon. Uh, our total enrollment is about 4,500 students on our campus. Almost all of those students are pursuing their first degree or their bachelor's degree. Uh, we are located in Monmouth. So we are about 30 minutes outside of Salem, the state capital, about an hour and a half south from Portland and about an hour inland from the coast. Um, so lots of rain, lots of greenery on our campus. Our top major on campus is education. We were originally founded as a teaching school. After that, business, psychology, criminal justice, and exercise science are our next top majors. We are also nationally recognized for our American Sign Language Interpreting Program and American Sign Language Studies Program. But we do offer over 50 majors to choose from uh, and over 70 minors to choose from. Uh, we offer small class sizes. Our average class size sits at about 20. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Uh, all of our professors hold PhDs primarily. We do offer have some that are masters and are uh, visiting professors. All of our classes are taught by professors, so no TAs, no grad students are teaching any of our classes, so they get to know you and you get to know them. Uh, we offer a lot of student leadership opportunities and we compete at Division II Athletics. So here you can see our listing for Division II Athletics, our women's teams and our men's teams. We are adding men's soccer at the Division II Athletics level, uh, and that is coming fall of 2022. So if you are a senior uh, this year, uh, our men's soccer team will be starting up the same time that you start your freshman year at Western. We're very excited to be adding that on our campus. We also offer club sports and intramural sports. Uh, intramural sports are Western only, so you're competing with other students on campus, whether it's casual or competitive or tournament style. And those are even more numerous than sort of the sort of standard uh, athletics that you think of. So yes, we have basketball and volleyball, but we also have intramurals for ultimate Frisbee, Frisbee golf. Um, we also have uh, like a Quidditch intramural team. 
gotta love that for the Harry Potter fans. Uh, our admissions requirements are listed here. You will see that our GPA, what we're looking for is a 2.75 minimum unweighted GPA. Uh, if you received any of our paperwork, uh, it will say a 3.0, but due to COVID, we have bumped it down to a 2.75 GPA because we understand that a lot of times virtual learning uh, might have been a struggle for you. We are a test optional school. We don't require the SAT or ACT for admissions purposes. We have also eliminated it from our scholarships. So you do not need an SAT or ACT score to apply for scholarships. We are also looking for most likely your graduation requirements with a C minus or better. So four years of English, three years of math through algebra two, three years of science, three years of social science and two years of the same second or foreign language, all with C minuses or better. So no Ds or Fs. If you hypothetically have a D or F somewhere on your transcript, uh, do reach out to us. We do have extra steps and ways to get you in the door. Uh, it is not an automatic no if you aren't meeting all of our requirements. You will also see listed here our list of transfer requirements. That's if you're looking at starting at a community college or another university before transferring to us. All incoming freshmen are required to live on housing in our housing their first year. We have co-ed and non-co-ed options. We also have housing for all three, four, five, however long you're with us, we do have housing available for you. Um, but after that first year, you can move off campus, but we do also have on-campus apartments after that first year. Uh, we have plenty of options available for our incoming freshmen that range anywhere from singles, doubles, triples, uh, also themed living communities. So so you already have a, a common interest built in with the people on your floor. Uh, we also have smaller pods and larger pods. So depending on how many people you want to live in your floor uh, is it an option as well. Uh, housing for incoming freshmen, the average cost is about 10,800. And that's whether you're an in-state student or an out-of-state student. We have plenty of opportunities and clubs and organizations available for you to get involved. We have things like our student government, resident hall association, multicultural student services, uh, and then also leadership opportunities. I also have sororities and fraternities, they're unhoused. We also have clubs that are getting together of people with similar interest. Uh, so we have things like swing dance club, zombie preparedness club, anime club, uh, cereal eating club. So if you get to campus and there's not a club for you, you can create your own. Just takes yourself, a couple friends, an advisor to sign a piece of paper, start your own club on campus. So we are a WUI school. It is automatic with admission, so you don't have to apply for it. You don't have to have any limits in terms of majors or anything like that or a certain GPA. It is automatic with admission. So your first year, you're looking at about 14,400 or so uh, for tuition for the year, uh, and that's taking 15 credits a term. 15 credits a term means you graduate in four years. Uh, then with the 10,000 to live on campus, it'll be about 25,000. We also have plenty of scholarship opportunities available for you. We encourage you to visit campus. We have plenty of on-campus opportunities as well as virtual visits. Please get in contact with us. Uh, we have uh, our application is free this year. So please feel free to apply. We just need the application and transcripts and you are good to go on that. So if you do have any questions, please reach out. Um, we would love to answer any questions that you might have. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, just an announcement that Humboldt, Humboldt State University was unable to make it with us tonight, um, And but they really want you to reach out to their admissions counselors. You can find more information on their website as well. So if you're interested in them, um, please feel free to contact their admissions counselors. They regret they weren't able to um, join us this evening. So now we get to the fun part, the Q&A portion of the evening, um, where I'll uh, pose a question and um, we'll have everyone answer kind of round robin. So if you're able to, um, please feel free to come back on camera and we can um, go ahead and get started. All righty, so I will put our first question up here. And our first question for the evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, so you can go ahead and give your little uh, nuggets of wisdom to our participants here today. We'll get started um, with Oregon Institute of Technology and we'll go in the same order. 
Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing to consider when shopping around um, is to really think of it like that as shopping. You know, you're thinking about um, something that you want, something that you need. Think about all those factors, location, size, uh, weather in the area, of course. Um, all of those things are, you know, something you should be doing, doing your research and um, getting on campus is going to be the biggest one. That's going to be, you know, whether virtually or meeting with someone individually, making a connection with someone on campus um, and seeing it in person is going to be um, one of the best things you can do to, to see if it's going to be the right fit for you. I think great advice there getting on campus for sure, or if you're in Alaska, that may be difficult, but you know, checking out your virtual options, I just want to reiterate that. But uh, definitely an easy one is pay attention to deadlines. Um, a lot of schools will still admit you. You can start after the deadlines have passed, but you may have missed things like financial aid opportunities. And we know college is expensive. So be sure to, when you're shopping around, like uh, Oregon Tech suggested, be sure you pay attention to the particular deadlines for admission and especially for financial aid. I would say visit the campus. You need to be able to see if it's a good fit for you or not. You don't wanna start off school and then realize halfway through the semester that it's not a good fit. I would just add, um, don't listen to what other people <laughs> to say other people who are going through their college search i mean your search is your search and um what's the right fit for your sibling or your cousin or your neighbor or your friend um is not necessarily the right fit for you at all and there's there's lots of um, misinformation out there and disinformation um about what are the right schools or the wrong schools to attend and this is all about finding a fit where you will thrive um, and finish your degree and so I encourage you to just really think about what's right for you and not let others um, sway you one way or the other. Uh, for me, uh, I would say uh, know that the average student does change their major a couple times. Um, so do also take a look at if the school offers some backup ideas for you or has a wide range of majors in case you decide to change your mind or if you're going into it um, with a couple dip different options. So, um, you know, you, you might not end up uh, with the major that you started with or the idea that you started with because maybe you took a class at uh, on campus and you really loved, fell in love with a completely different major than you would have thought of. Um, so definitely don't just focus on your major, also look at other options too. Perfect, thank you so much everyone. I appreciate that advice. I think for me to add on with, um, you know, the dates and deadlines, keep a spreadsheet or something in your the notes tab of your phone um, to keep everything organized or, you know, Google Calendar so you have everything um, those scholarship deadlines and application deadlines, all of that fun stuff, um, keep it organized and to have a, a dedicated professional sounding email as well. So that way all of your school information goes into one email without any spam um, and, you know, have it sound nice, have it be your name or something, not like Taylor's Lift Lover 2021 or something like that. So, um, you know, that's my advice too, is just to, to have that, um, that professional sounding email and it'll help keep you organized as well. So um, let's see, we'll go on to our next question here. So our next question for the evening is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? So um, if there's something you want to just reiterate from your presentation or a fun fact you wanna share, um, now's your time. So we'll go ahead and go in the same order. All right. Um, something that we love to talk about at Oregon Tech, um, I did mention it briefly in the presentation, is going to be the opportunities. Um, those opportunities are coming directly from our small, um, small size as a university, a small class size. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1, average class size of about 17. Um, and we usually do no more than 25 in a classroom. I can tell you as an alum, I did have a class one term that only had seven students in it. Um, so, you know, getting to know your professors on a first name basis, meeting others in your program and others outside of your program as well. Uh, those are going to lend themselves really greatly to internship experience, um, on the job experience in our, you know, small hometown of Klamath Falls. Um, and just again, those great opportunities are going to be right at your door um, because you know the people <laughs> that are handing them out. So. All right, a little, um, a little something I didn't get into in my presentation, but 
Uh, we know that finances and time are really important for you and all students. I just wanted to let everybody know that half of our majors you can actually complete in three years instead of four through part, it's what we call the Accelerated Baccalaureate Degree Program. We don't make you take extra classes or go to summer school. We take a look at your high school classes and we actually uh, determine what classes you don't have to take in college. So you're still averaging 15, 16 credits per term, but you're able to finish in three years. That saves you obviously 25% off the cost of your bachelor's degree. Also lets you get a job sooner and start earning money sooner. Or you can get into grad school a year earlier than your friends. So accelerate a baccalaureate degree at Southern Oregon if you're interested in that. Something that I mentioned in my presentation about GCU is that a lot of things on campus are student branded. Um, GCU does not take any ownership of student entrepreneurship ideas. So a lot of students have come up with their own branding for electric longboards and patents, as well as, um, I don't know, like they've patented energy drinks and certain things like that, that actually they make a lot of money off of and GCU will not take any of the of the profit from that or the ownership of the patents. Also, GCU is very committed to student feedback and student voice. So throughout all their growth, they actually do a lot of surveys and you see things on campus change based on your surveys. I'm going to be like Ian and say a couple of things that I actually didn't have a chance to mention in my presentation. Um, one is that sometimes there's a misperception about whether people can be a, a STEM student at a liberal arts college. Uh, and I just want people to know you absolutely can. Willamette's president uh, is an astrophysicist, probably the most prominent scientist leading a liberal arts college right now in the US. Um, and he keeps a, a real eye on our STEM scholars. Um, this is a great place to be a science student because of the research opportunities and lab opportunities. The other thing I would mention is that um, the graduate programs that we offer at Willamette can be combined with your undergraduate degree. So for instance, if you want to do your bachelor's degree and your law degree at Willamette, you can do those things in one less year than it would normally take for you to complete both degrees. Same is true with your MBA um, or a data science masters. So you really can get um, a great value for your money if you choose to spend your time um, completing two degrees at Willamette. So I guess mine is a, a bit more of a fun fact about Western um, rather than sort of the nitty gritty of it. Uh, but while we may be the Western wolves, uh, we have a ridiculous number of squirrels on our campus um, and they all have their own territory and they don't, uh, you can walk on campus and see uh, a ridiculous number of squirrels. We have a Instagram that is uh, dedicated to the squirrels of Western. We've had people uh, make friends with them, dress them up. It is a whole thing on campus. So if you get to campus or if you take it the time to, to tour us, there will always be squirrels everywhere uh, because we do win uh, awards in terms of Tree City USA. Uh, every year, the amount of trees on our campus is numerous. So of course, the squirrels are going to come along with that. Um, so mine's more of a fun fact rather uh, than sort of the uh, academic aspect of it. So it, it's something that's a little more um, neat <laughs> when you come to, to our campus. Thank you so much, Kristen. That is fantastic. Uh, I'm going to have to go follow that Instagram now. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you to all of our uh, institutions as well for sharing um, more about them today. That will conclude our Q&A. So thank you again um, just for sharing more about your institutions with everyone here. Um, and thank you participants for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions both tonight as well as there are panels tomorrow. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Alaska. That's strivescan.com slash Alaska. Thank you so much. Have a great day.